So today's a nice day out today. It's a little chilly this morning, but uh, warming right up. <clears throat> I thought, you know what? <clears throat> Maybe it's time for me to do a little rant on here. <laughs> you know, every day I'm, I'm coming on here was trying to get something new going, or but a lot of times I like to just talk about the good things out there uh, that are happening. People with big hearts, and you know the the people that uh, like to give and uh, help people get back on their feet. Uh, more. More or less, uh, people that believe like I do, and I guess when you look out there and you uh, see that type of people out there getting together and making uh, things happen, where uh, they gather to uh, figure out what they can do in this world to improve it, and you know, something it's there's a good feeling in that sometimes especially when you're one of the ones that may be giving. And it doesn't necessarily have to be monetarily, by the way. If you give of yourself and you're able to help somebody by doing that, uh, th that's quite a deal. Even if it's you go help them physically do something, or if you try to show them a way of uh, bettering things f either for themselves or uh, maybe the household it could be nothing more than uh, sharing a recipe with somebody. Th all those things are, are giving thoughts, and it's part of our nature to share when we can. It, it really is. But there are those out there that they're just plain mean. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do today. I had somebody come on my channel that was trying to be mean. And <clears throat> for all the wrong reasons, unfortunately, uh, you notice I clear my throat a lot. And I don't have a choice. Uh, I would spend most of my time going, going like that while I clear my throat. And most of you know that the reason I do that is because I have this thing called COPD. Pirate came from smoking. That was my problem. I did that. I worked with asbestos in some of my early years, and my lung on my left side at the bottom as asbestosis that, that's partially calcified and uh, there's nothing I can do about it. And the doctors have looked at my lungs and yes, they could <clears throat> cut part of my lungs and give more room for the expansion of my lungs and make it maybe that I could breathe better. And from the things I looked at, that wasn't necessarily uh, something that would be fruitful, let's put it that way. Uh, there's pros and cons, and and I chose to uh, not do it. I was diagnosed with this in 1987, so I've lived with it an awful long time. When I found out I had COPD, I quit smoking. And I understand <clears throat> what was the main cause of the problem I have. And... Uh, <clears throat> through the years, uh, going back and forth with different doctors, and not particularly worrying about it. At the time, I was told I could work about 15 years and it would take a hold, and I wouldn't hardly have an awful time to work after that. And uh, it was pretty much a good, not a good, but the uh, prediction was pretty much held true, and I became extremely uh, sick and I had uh, pneumonia and bronchitis had got the best of me and I didn't know if I was gonna be able to make it through it. And uh, after six uh, weeks of being going through treatments, I still could hardly walk 20 or 30 feet without stopping and resting. And so I went to another specialist and, and uh, he told me that uh, maybe uh, he could put me on the list and sometime in the next five years get a heart and lung transplant. At this time, I was still working a full-time job. And I thought, boy, <laughs> what a way to go. And, of course, I read all the things up and 
uh, even my chances of getting the lung and heart were <laughs> negligible at the best. And uh, if I did go through it, I had about a 50-50 chance of surviving back then the, the operation itself. And then trying to live five years after a heart-lung transplant doesn't always work out very well either. <laughs> so uh, some friends of mine told me that the best thing I could do is get out there and try to get in better shape. And that seemed one of the best options. And uh, that's what I did. I bought a bike and I started uh, doing things. And I got where I could actually uh, go quite a ways on that bike. My uh, lungs had improved. I was uh, able to get rid of a lot of the phlegm out of my lungs. And although they would never heal, my x-rays, uh, there was very little change in it because instead of deteriorating, they kind of just stayed the same. But the big thing was getting rid of the phlegm. And slowly but surely over the course of a number of years of this type of exercise, I was able to breathe and walk, and I could walk a great distance. I couldn't run. <laughs> couldn't go out there and start lifting weights because uh, as I try to lift weights, my breathing stops. I don't have enough strength in the muscles up here to breathe and do uh, manual uh, exercises. <clears throat> but I could walk, and uh, like I say, a bike. <laughs> I can't believe I bought that bike and I rode it just about every single night. Main reason was because I wanted to see from one day to the next, and the good Lord blessed me with letting me do that. And uh, over the course of years, I found out that I could get on there and do a little singing, and the Canadian study said that would also help your lungs. And uh, I actually, I've seen a, a several percent improvement in the volume of my lungs, which that's quite a, quite a deal. When you're losing volume, but all of a sudden it goes the other way by 3%, that makes you happy. And year after year, my uh, x-rays proved out that although I wasn't deteriorating, I may not, the, the lungs just weren't going to heal. And they don't. Nobody expected them to. <clears throat> well, <laughs> I was pretty scared when I was first told about uh, the longevity, what it might be. And I, I, I did. I, I, I asked the Lord to let me get into retirement. And uh, I told him that I would like to put enough money away so that my wife would be comfortable and that any bills I had could be paid and, you know, whatever it took. I just, that's all I wanted. And if I could live uh, into retirement, then I would be a happy man. And uh, the good Lord blessed me with a number of years. I'm 80 years old and still going. But the one thing that I have as a reminder, especially in the last few years, <clears throat> is a constant cough and a clearing of my throat. So <laughs> along comes this guy on my channel, and you guys know that I try to spread as much uh, news of good as I can. And yes, I get into these dog fights on here that I shouldn't get into, I should know better. But I have uh, recently tried, said that I would rather build than to tear apart. But unfortunately, I've gathered some people that uh, probably despise me because of they think that I'm on the wrong side of whatever they consider right. And I've always said that everybody has a right to their opinion <clears throat> as long as you don't try to force it on somebody else. And I'm not forcing mine on anybody out there. <clears throat> as you notice, I, I clear my throat on a regular basis. So because of the haters that have hung around one of them decided to come on here and then actually it's been more than one but one became more obnoxious let's put it that way and uh made a complaint about me clearing my throat on my mic 
And although I'd rather not do that on the mic, I understand where it can be disturbing to a certain extent, except for the fact that I can't help it. It is a disease that's not going to go away, no matter what I do. I mean, I I use this as uh, more or less to try to make it so I can breathe easier, but it doesn't take my cough or my trying to clear my throat. So the reason I have to clear my throat occasionally is because the mucus in my trachea is continually being pushed up as as I, during my waking hours. And in the mornings in particular, I have more of a problem because it's pushing down, trying to go back my lungs, and the trachea, the hair in the trachea pushes it up. And some of you may not understand what, what all that is about, but believe me, if you were in my shoes and you go through it all them years, you understand very well how necessary it is for that action going on. So <clears throat> if I waited, <coughs> Till I was clear, I would never be on here. I couldn't. <clears throat> I can control it to a certain extent, but not completely. And I could put my mic down and walk out of the room, come back and, and talk for a few minutes and, and be okay. But what I found out is as I go through this, if I don't, I mean myself, I'm used to it, so I clear my throat on a regular basis. And if I didn't, my lungs would fill up with mucus. That, that's just the way it is. <clears throat> well, this guy <laughs> didn't like the fact that I clear it while I've got a microphone and talking. And But I suspect it wasn't really the problem with my clearing my throat. And it may bother you out there. At least you know why I'm doing it. But I think his real intent was he was trying to disparage anything I was doing. I'm out here trying to help a family out, if I can, that is in need. And everybody thinks that be, because of some of the habits they may have had before or some of the, the judgments that uh, they have of this family, uh, that I shouldn't be trying to do anything good for them. And it's not in my nature not to try to help get somebody back on their feet. It's just not. And there's a lot of people out there that can't understand that part of Christianity. People judge. But for this person, it was more than a judgment. He figured by going after me, by trying to embarrass me or shame me, that he could take away from the good I'm trying to do on my channel. Well, <laughs> for him, you know, I feel sorry for you because for you to attack me over something I can't help, you know, I realize I caused this problem. And I've got this cough and I have to clear my throat if I want to live. Now, I'm the one that sinned by smoking. And is it a sin? You bet it is. Because it destroys this body the good Lord give me. Free and clear. All he wants me to do is take care of it until the day that I'm able to return to his house. And I didn't treat it right. I prayed for more life. And I have no right to do that. I have no right to ask him for more years. I'm the one that destroyed myself. Not you, not anybody else. Me. I asked mainly, if I wanted to help so that my wife would have a better life. If I could live long enough to see that. And I fully expected to die within a year or two after I reached the age of 65. I don't know exactly why the Lord has kept me around all this long because the doctor said I would not be here. So I, I try to repay part of that anytime I can. Now, quite frankly, some of you have asked why I don't put my money where my mouth is. 
I thought I explained to you here not too long ago. You know, I had made a decision to help somebody out, and over the course of years, <clears throat> a little over a year ago, I ended up, it cost me over 30,000 bucks. Now, it had to do with some people that destroyed a house that I sold them that I had to, after a couple of years of uh, failure to paying and taking care of it, and, and you know, I did everything I could to keep them going, and it didn't work. And uh, because of the liability I had on it, it was a land contract that I had with them. The, uh, I was getting calls from the police department as well as the neighbors out there. And I finally went ahead and foreclosed and took the property back. It was completely damaged. <clears throat> <clears throat> and uh, my losses on it were 30000 plus dollars. I did sell it. I, was, I sold it very quickly. I'm too old to fix the property. I'm not going to pay somebody else to fix it. And I sold it to a, a guy that was in the trades, and he lived in the nearby area, and he was willing to take it on and bring it back to life and sell it to somebody else. It was a very nice little home. It was about a 1,000 square feet, three bedrooms, one bath. When I had sold it, it was 100% painted, 100% carpet, subflooring. The cabinets were 100% rebuilt and some of them replaced. New stove, new refrigerator, new uh, dishwasher, uh, brand new hookups for the washer or, or, and dryer. It had both gas and electric for the dryer. Uh, rebuilt some of the uh, bearing walls in, the, in the, the house. It had a brand new roof and part of the new sheeting on the roof, new fascia and metal, uh, rebuilt windows and storms. <clears throat> the yard, I spent uh, close to $5,000 removing trees and shrubbery and replanting and putting everything brand new in, all new grass through that whole entire place. Uh, Re-leveled all the property, uh, repaired sidewalks. Uh, it, <laughs> it, it was a dollhouse. And my wife and I did that. And we did it over a number of years. And we trusted somebody with it. And they had a story. And we thought we'd take care of them. It's not the first time I've helped a young couple out get on their feet. <clears throat> and all I asked them was to take care of the house and make their payments. And uh, they got way behind, and so I redid the contract, and I did it. So, and it was beyond the years of what they'd ever be able to. For I would never realize the end payment because of my age. It went beyond what my life expectancy is. I finally had to remove them because of the damage. Now, they had separated before this happened. The children were not in the house no longer and it was turned into a flop house. There was nothing, uh, no way for me to recover damages. And I wasn't going to go after the, the woman. She ended up with the children. And for me to go after her to make her pay damages would have taken away from that entire family and the kids would have suffered <clears throat> more than the parents. And uh, since they were separated and no longer living together, uh, the guy was having problems with his habits and he was not going to be able to work much, if any. And yes, I could have spent time chasing him. Uh, the courts would have awarded me all the damage. It wouldn't have been a problem. But at my age, I would have never realized the, the payment back because it was understandable. They can't pay it. And it was better for my own mental health to leave it alone and walk away from it, sell what was there, and take the, the loss. And that's what I did. Now, if I was mean-spirited, I'd have made their life miserable. They would have never had a moment's peace. They, they, there would have been somebody waiting to get the piece of their paycheck for the rest of, well, my estate would have handled it until it was paid. But I, as far as me, I mean, maybe a few more years I'd have seen some, some of it. I don't know. It would have been a lot of work to try to collect it. 
it was in my best interest as well as theirs just to say no they'll have to answer the good lord for the things they did hopefully somewhere down the line they'll work it out and go on um, and the children will be better off for me not to make it miserable on their parents because it would have been taken against them too and they didn't do anything wrong they they were innocent and i don't i didn't need the money so why would i chase it but i'm chasing somebody that you know, i'm not really chasing anybody on here it's one of those things where I have taken up the cause of a family that I think needs help. And I realize maybe I'll never see the tree bear fruit that I'm trying to protect. It may not happen. <clears throat> it's just things I've looked at. You know, the, the person that is down and out, they deserve a chance. And... Sometimes they bite the hand that feeds them. It, it happens. I'm not always I'm not always right, but in this case, I don't think I'm wrong either for trying to help. So this person who come on to disparage me and the people that would say, "Put your money where your mouth is," they have, they really don't know my background or what I've tried to help different people out. And I'm not stingy. I don't try to uh, take away from somebody else to enhance m my way of life. I don't. I just don't do it. It's, it. I just don't have it in my wheelhouse to do that. My wife and I are, we're thankful that the Lord has given us the privilege of being able to live comfortable. We have uh, plenty to eat, and we have a a nice home. And I'm able to do the things out here you know th this this garage for me is a paradise i've said before it's my utopia the things i like to do are here the things some of the things that i've built with my own two hands i've got some uh, tools i've had since i was about 21 or 22 years old in here they because they mean something to me you know when i had very little what i did have was important at the time and today some of those tools they're not they're not really good enough to use like you would use every day or anything like that. They just mean something to me. They're, they're part of me. They fit my hands. But this person comes along and tries to make me feel bad because of a cough. And yet this cough is, is all it is is a reminder and maybe the punishment of the Lord on myself for doing something I shouldn't have done, which was smoke. And working in asbestos, I knew the asbestos was bad with me, and I didn't wear a mask. That was that was on me. But for somebody to come along and, and get upset with me, all they had to do was reach up and turn the switch off or turn to another channel. That's all. But instead, they stuck around so they could stick it in me. They wanted to make me feel bad. Let me tell you, brother, you can't make me feel any worse than I already do. I know that this cough was caused by me. And this may be my punishment for being, uh, for causing a problem to my Lord. Because the, he, he gave me something and I damaged it. And that was his body. So if you want to judge me, I guess there's nothing really I can do about it. But you're judging me for what I'm trying to do that's good. If I was trying to do something that was bad, it'd be different. There's nothing bad with trying to help somebody. And even if that person that you're trying to help raise up, if you're trying to get them to get on the right path, maybe in following the Lord, or trying to get them to come up from the bad habits they may have or whatever put them in the position they are, that's not bad. That, that's a good trait. And maybe you ought to try it instead of going out there and trying to bring somebody down or something they're trying to do that's good. I understand you probably don't understand it because apparently your life is so damaged at this point, you can't see the light of the Lord or the people that are trying to do his work. Now, <laughs> I try not to judge you or people that are like you, that hate. 
I do pray for people, and I do it a, a lot, trying to get them on the right path. Now, as far as I'm concerned, if I've helped somebody out and it didn't work out, the investment was at least worth the try. It was. <laughs> I come up through life, I didn't have a whole lot. And therefore, I've tried to share it, my life and some of the fruits of the, of the labor that God just gave me. I mean... Things don't just come out of the the air. Somebody has to help you, and you have to help. I mean, that's that's your purpose here. Uh, boy, I, I feel bad for you. So, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm not happy with what you tried to do to me, and and try to make it out like I'm the bad guy, and that I'm doing something that disturbs you. A nasty habit like clearing my throat. I will never be able to get over that. And I hope you understand that. I guess if somebody was walking down the street and they had the brace on their leg, you'd kick them, kick the leg that had the brace on it and knock them down because the brace offends you. Offends you. But the day's going to come where something like this, this affliction, may visit you. The Lord has a long memory. Much better, much longer than mine, and much greater than mine. So I would be careful how you tread. For in your judgment of me, so will you be judged. It's, that's just a simple fact. <clears throat> and I'm human. <laughs> and I realize not being, and never will be, perfect. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of a story one time. I, I used to play in the school band, and uh, I was uh, one of those guys that tried to be a perfectionist. And the director of the band would have to, well, you would get graded. It, it was in school, okay, and it's part of an elective. And so you would have certain things you had to memorize or go through or practice. And I played a cornet back then. I could play a tr uh, trumpet as well. There's not a lot of difference in them. Matter of fact, I could play a lot of different brass instruments fairly easy and not too bad. But I was playing a piece there, and I stopped. And I started all over. Before I got too far, he stopped me and said, Listen, Ray, <laughs> why did you stop and restart? And I said, Well, I had a bad note. And... I, I wanted to get through this thing without doing that. So I start, restarted it so I could I'd go through it. And he said, well, if you're playing in this band and you're giving a concert out there and you hit a bad note, if you stop, the audience out there will realize that there was a problem. And the people around you will too that playing in the band. And you may ruin that concert at the time because of the because you made a mistake and you decided to stop he said I'm not asking for perfection I'm just asking for a performance so let's go back in here and you play your piece all the way through and I did and then I realized that was, that's good for a life lesson because when you're playing an instrument like that, no matter how many times you practice, you're going to have some sour notes from time to time. <laughs> and my vanity was stopping me because I th wanted it to be perfect. <laughs> and I realized I would never be perfect. And that was okay because I was going to be part of a group and the group would cover my mistakes by not making a mistake, <laughs> if that makes sense to you. So those of you that played in a band, you've heard a sour note at different times, but the audience rarely hears it. The director will know you did it, and they may talk to you after the concert's over and say what happened, but other than that, it's a good life lesson. So for that guy that doesn't like me to clear my throat, 
my, my suggestion is this. If it bothers you that much, go to another channel. And understand that if you come here, <coughs> I am going to cough, and uh, I'm going to clear my throat from time to time. That's it. That's the way it's going to be. And for all my subs out there, I, I hope I didn't bore you too bad. It is a rant to a certain extent and an explanation of what I've done to me, not, not to somebody else. And I don't purposely do things like that. But I hope this explanation will help you maybe not judge too many people that have an affliction regardless of what it is, uh, whether it's a, a mole on the nose or an, an eye with a patch or uh, maybe it's not right now. <laughs> it's like they can't help it and they take a hanky out and it, you're saying, how disgusting, <laughs> and yet they can't help it. Uh, most people will turn their, their head or do whatever they can do it. Uh, with me, the clearing of my throat, I, I've had to do it now for quite a few years. It is getting worse. Uh, th there is a day when I'm going to stop, and that's when I'm probably going to be shaking hands with the Lord or trying to explain what I've done with my life. So with that, forgive me for these little sins that I've committed, <laughs> and hopefully uh, they'll never visit you that you won't have to go through these afflictions. Be glad that you're not me. Uh, believe me, it's no fun having a disease of any kind. And uh, with that, I'm gonna let you go. I, there's no reason for me to keep on going over this thing. Just know that it's there and um, you don't have to listen, you don't. And for all my subs, thank you so much for sticking by me, and uh, most of all, <laughs> uh, I realized it took a hater to call it out. That I, I can assure you. And it's because he didn't like my message. Uh, unfortunately, I get a lot of people on here that don't want me to help somebody that they feel should not be helped. They have decided to judge uh, some people out there, and uh, I can't bring myself to to judge them, and there, there was a time where I didn't really want anything to do with them um, because I believed there was a problem, and if there is, I didn't want to be a pro uh, I didn't want to be a part of it. But on the other hand, I figured they had suffered so much that it was going to cause problems with them, and that maybe that helping hand that I've used before. Maybe they're the ones that'll help out. I can tell you this. There have been times where I've helped people and it worked out very well. Their lives were changed. They went on to uh, have a good life. I, I've seen it on both, both ways, go bad, go good. And it's worth the few times that it's failed to see somebody walk away and have a new chance at life. It is worth it. And hopefully some of you will experience that in your lifetime of helping somebody and th they'll look back at it and say hey, thank you so much for giving me that help I, that's what I needed and uh, just knowing that they've gone was worth more than uh, anything money can actually buy it's just a, a nice warm feeling that that somebody was put back on the path they needed to be, be on so with that smile have a good day and if I clear my throat just ignore it. Just ignore it. <laughs>